Hello, everybody. Uh, after three years speaking about ambush marketing because of the games, games are over. And there are new hot issues in Brazil. I would name three. Uh, advertising of pharmaceuticals, uh, digital marketing, the increase of digital marketing, and the first cases of native advertising. Uh, in, uh, in the digital media, and also related to, to pharmaceuticals and, and, and food products, uh, there have been several cases decided by CONAR. CONAR is the Brazilian uh, Self-Regulation Council. They decided 380 cases last year, uh, an increase of over 20% from the preceding year. And 20% uh, of the cases were related to uh, drugs and, and uh, cosmetics. So th this is a, uh, a drink, very popular in northeast of Brazil, made of, a, of an herb called catuaba. And, uh, so this was advertised in, in social media, and uh, there were complaints filed with CONAR because uh, any, any person could have access to that, e even minors. But the advertiser said that it was only uh, done on Facebook, and only uh, um, teenagers can have access to Facebook. Uh, to Facebook. And no, no uh, infant under 13 can have a Facebook account, so uh, that argument was, uh, was accepted by CONAR. The other case, uh, th this is the leading case of native adver advertising in Brazil, a very famous blogger, uh, Gabri Gabriela Pugliese from Sao Paulo, she, she is making a lot of money doing native advertising, uh, but a group of consumers didn't, didn't like that one. She, she, uh, she was just taking selfies with a bottle of Skoll beer. Skoll is a, is a brand owned by Ambev, you know, the Belgian Brazilian brewery. And so Ambev said, we have nothing to do with that. She did it because she wanted to. But uh, Conar uh, summoned both the blogger and, and the beer company. And the beer company asked the blogger to uh, delete some wording and to include uh, uh, wording that that uh, that the mark belonged to Ambev and things like that. So Conar understood that Ambev was behind it because otherwise they wouldn't do that. Uh, in the pharmaceutical pharmaceutical industry, uh, there were, as I said, 20% of the cases of the 308 cases were uh, <coughs> complaints by consumers or by Conar itself, ex officio, as in this case. Uh, this one uh, showed actors uh, acting as paramedics, and Conar asked uh, Bayer to, to uh, take down the ad because uh, when doctors appear in commercials, they have to be identified by their names and registration numbers. And they said, no, this is not a doctor, this is a paramedic. They said, no, the, but the Conar said, no, the same concept applies. You cannot use a, an actor to pretend he's a paramedic and recommend a, a drug. The other case is with a famous pop singer, Anita. She is more like a funk singer and rapper. Uh, she uh, also advertised a Beringer Innenheim uh, drug. And, uh, and the consumer complained that this was posted on Instagram and had no warnings, no, no uh, lettering, nothing. And, uh, and the Canard ordered the alteration of the commercial. Uh, another drug case, I'm going to skip that. And this is a very important decision. On Visa, the Brazilian FDA had uh, issued a, a resolution in 2008 regulating the, the uh, pharmaceutical advertising law, but the, the resolution went beyond the law. So it was much more uh, rigid, you know, strict than the law. And the Association of TV and Radio Channels uh, filed a lawsuit which was decided uh, in January, the 27th of January, by the, the appellate, federal appellate court of the first region in Brasilia, uh, considering the resolution null because it was unconstitutional. So now Anvisa will have to issue a new resolution on, because it was restricting <coughs> OTC, the advertising of OTC as well. You know. So this is it about Brazil, the new topic.